What if everything you thought you knew about the Ottomans was wrong? They were not just Turks. Their empire was built on the blood of Greeks, Armenians, Jews, and Persians. Even the Sultans themselves carried more Balkan and Caucasian blood than Central Asian. This isn't the version of history you'll find in school books, but once you see the DNA evidence, you'll never look at the Ottomans or modern Turkey the same way again. Keep watching till the end, because the real truth will shock you. Let's go back to the beginning. The word Turk originally referred to tribes living on the great steppes of Central Asia. These were nomadic people, horsemen, warriors, herders moving with the seasons living in yurts and following a way of life tied closely to the land. Around a thousand years ago, some of these tribes began to move westward. They were pulled west by new opportunity, new lands, rich empires, and the promise of conquest. These migrating tribes carried with them their Turkic languages, traditions, and their DNA genes shaped by centuries of life in Central Asia. When geneticists study modern Turks in Turkey today, only a small fraction of their DNA comes from Central Asia. The rest comes from somewhere else. So, what happened to those nomadic tribes after they marched into Anatolia? By the 11th century, Turkic tribes like the Seljuks entered Anatolia, the land we now call Turkey. This region was not empty. It was the heart of the Byzantine Empire, filled with Greeks, Armenians, Persians, and other ancient peoples. When the Turkic warriors settled here, they didn't remain separate. They mixed with the local population. They took local wives, adopted local customs, and slowly blended into the Anatolia. Over generations, this mixing transformed their DNA. The Central Asian signature remained, but it became a small part of a much larger genetic picture. And here's where the story gets even more interesting. Because out of this blending would rise one of history's greatest empires, the Ottomans. In the late 13th century, a small Turkic clan led by Osman I carved out a tiny state in northwestern Anatolia. From this family line came the name Ottoman. At first, they were just one of many small groups fighting for survival on the ruins of the Byzantine. But through clever alliances, military skill, and pure luck, they expanded. By the 14th and 15th centuries, the Ottomans were swallowing up land across Anatolia and the Balkans. Soon they captured Constantinople, renaming it Istanbul, and declared themselves rulers of an empire. This moment is often seen as a Turkish triumph, a victory of Central Asian bloodlines. But genetically, the empire was becoming something very different. Because as the Ottomans conquered new lands, they didn't just rule people, they absorbed them. The Ottoman Empire was not a nation-state like modern countries. They ruled Greeks in the Aegean, Armenians in the east, Arabs in the south, Slavs and Albanians in the Balkans and Jews scattered across their cities. Over centuries, these groups intermarried, converted, and blended into Ottoman society. The shocking fact is most Ottoman sultans had mothers who were not ethnically Turkic at all. Many were Greek, Serbian, Ukrainian, or Circassian women from the Balkans and the Caucasus. This means the very bloodline of the Ottoman dynasty itself was a blend of many peoples. And if the ruling family was mixed, imagine the rest of the empire. If the Ottomans absorbed so many different peoples, what does that mean for their DNA today? Did the Central Asian roots vanish completely, or did they survive in hidden ways? Let's look at what modern science has discovered. In the last two decades, scientists from Harvard, Max Planck, and other major institutions have studied Turkish DNA. Their results shocked historians. They found that modern Turks are mostly descended from the ancient peoples of Anatolia Greeks, Armenians, and others who lived there long before the Ottomans arrived. The Central Asian Turkic contribution was around 10 to 20 percent. The rest comes from the Balkans, Middle East, and the Caucasus. In other words, the DNA of Turks today reflects centuries of mixing between Asia and Europe. This isn't just about the general population. Even the Ottoman army was genetically diverse. The famous Janissaries, the elite soldiers of the empire, were actually Christian boys from the Balkans, taken from their families converted to Islam and raised as warriors. Over time, many of them rose to positions of great power and marrying into Ottoman families. So the backbone of Ottoman military was built on Balkan DNA. This raises a question. If the Ottomans were so genetically mixed, what does it mean to be Turkish? 
The truth is, Ottomans never cared about race or genetics the way modern nations do. Their identity was based on religion and loyalty. This is why the empire lasted so long. It wasn't a single ethnic group ruling others. It was a complex web of peoples. Modern nationalism in the 19th and 20th centuries tried to paint the Ottomans as purely Turkish. DNA has now shattered that illusion. But this leads to a bigger surprise. If the Ottomans were so mixed, how much of their DNA survives in the people of Turkey today, and how does it shape identity in the modern world? Let's find out. Today genetic tests of Turkish people reveal a striking truth. Turks are one of the most blended populations in the world. You can find genes from Central Asia, but also from the Balkans, the Middle East, and even further. Every Turkish face tells a story. The eyes of a Central Asian nomad, the features of a Greek farmer, the blood of a Balkan soldier, the ancestry of an Arab merchant. This mixture is not a weakness, it's the true strength of the Turkish people. It explains why modern Turkey feels like both Europe and Asia. It shows that the Ottoman legacy was never about one bloodline. It was many peoples coming together under one empire. The DNA secrets of the Ottomans remind us of something bigger. History is not as clean and simple as we were taught. Behind every modern identity lies centuries of mixing, migration, and change. The Ottomans are just one example of this truth. They began as a small Turkic tribe. They ended as a vast empire of many peoples, and their DNA lives on in millions of people today. So the next time someone tells you history is about pure nations and ancient bloodlines, remember the Ottomans. Their power came from being mixed. The shocking DNA secrets of the Ottoman Turks are not just about genetics. It's about identity, belonging, and the stories we tell ourselves. So when you look at the story of the Ottomans, don't just see warriors and sultans. See the Greeks, Armenians, Arabs, Slavs, Jews, and countless others whose blood made the empire possible. Some people won't like hearing this, but nationalists often want to believe the Ottoman Turks were a pure, unbroken bloodline from Central Asia. But the science says otherwise. DNA shows that most of today's Turks are far more related to Greeks, Armenians, Slavs, and Arabs than to steppe warriors. The empire was never about one race. This is uncomfortable for many because it challenges the story they grew up with. For centuries, history books and politics told people that nations are pure, ancient, and separate. But genetics proves the opposite. They cross borders, religions, and identities. The Ottomans proved that purity is a myth. The mothers of the sultans often came from Christian families taken into the empire. That means the dynasty that led the Islamic world for centuries carried just as much Balkan and European blood as Asian blood. And this raises a bigger question. If the Ottomans weren't purely Turkish, then what does it even mean to be Turkish today? Is it religion? The truth may be that identity is more about culture and story than genetics. That's the real secret. The Ottomans were never powerful because they were pure. They were powerful because they were mixed. Greatness comes not from purity, but diversity. So what do you think? Were the Ottomans Turkish or a mix of many peoples? Let me know in the comments. I read every single one. And if you want more hidden DNA stories like this, make sure to subscribe because the next secret might be even more shocking.